sermon passage for this morning can be found in the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 1 to 12. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the woman took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly, two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In the fright, the woman bowed down with their faces on the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how you told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over the hands of the sinners. Be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the woman, because their words seemed to be to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strip of linen lying by themselves. And he went away wondering to himself what had happened. Shall we give the rest of the time to Pastor Pasi? His sermon titled, Lessons from the Vindication of the King. Happy Resurrection Day, everyone. Hmm. Today is a very special day for me. Thank you very much to all the church participants today. And I am so thankful to the pastor and all the church leaders who assigned me to preach the word of God. This is a special day, and especially for me, this is a very special day. Today, my message is lessons from the vindication of the king. But today, I would like to invite you to not to listen the story, but try to put in practice in your life. So, uh, this is uh, the message. So, let us look into the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you very much for your love and your care. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who saved our life and who died for us and who has risen from the dead and overcome every evil things. And now, as we are here to listen to your word, Lord, I pray that you'll speak to us, everyone, so that we may know you more, we may live for you, and we may stand for you all the time. Today, we are listening to your word. Speak to us and be with all of us. Thank you, Lord, for this time. In the name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. <clears throat> this day, uh, I feel very happy because uh, we, we learn many things from the church. Uh, in the, uh, the family camps also, we learn from the word, not only from that, from our experience, the leadership of the church, and how all the members participate, and yeah, how the, the programs are organized. All these are lessons for us. So I'm so thankful to the church, and uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. Okay, let me read it again slowly. Luke chapter 24, verse 1 to 12. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. They were looking for the body of Jesus, but they did not find. Four, and it happened that while they were perplexed, about this, behold, two men suddenly stood near them in dazzling apparel. And as the women were terrified and bowed their face to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living one among the dead? 
This is what we are looking for, right? We are looking for the living one among the dead. He is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he spoke to you while he was still in Galilee, saying that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. And they remembered his word. And returned from the tomb and reported all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now they were Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James. Also the other women with them were telling these things to the, the apostle. And these words appeared to them as nonsense. And they would not believe them. The disciples did not believe and it was like nonsense. But Peter arose and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen wrapping only, and he went away to his home, marveling at that which had happened. Okay, this is the, the passage. And we know that Jesus died on the cross on the Friday, and he was laid in the tomb, and in the Sunday morning, like this morning, the women went to the tomb and looked for the, bo- the body, and they did not find it. And they got the information that Jesus has risen from the dead. He is not among the dead. He is among the living. He is the living God. That's why we are worshiping today. We are worshiping the living God, not the dead God. Okay, so... I would like to take the big picture of the Bible. If we look at the the Bible, God created everything including human being. And he blessed it, but attempted to ruin by Satan. The whole picture. And God's restoration is there. God tried to restore the, the world and the people by choosing the people of Israel. And then, after that, from, through Jesus, God is restoring the, the people, the creation, everything. This is the, the sort of big picture. I'll, I'll not stay long for this. And Joseph's life, not only the whole picture, if we uh, go to Joseph's life, in the uh, family can we learn Joseph's life and David's life, so I'll not uh, talk much about this. God's plan revealed in the dream. And attempt to ruin God's plan by his brothers. But the restoration is there. Restoration. But in this restoration, it was not the fully restoration. Still, Joseph was suffering and Joseph was facing difficulties. It was not a full restoration like Jesus' vindication. Joseph said to his brother, You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. He suffered a lot, but he still sees that it is the plan of God. The man of God can see the plan of God even in the difficult time. David's life, anointed by God through Samuel, Attempted to ruin God's plan by Saul, and God's restoration is there. He still become the king, but still he was facing difficulties, as we all know. So in the life of David, even when he became the king, he still say, vindicate me, O Lord. In, the li- in, in his life, difficulties were there. Uh, Absalom, his son, also tried, also tried to kill him. So that time, and... Many uh, enemies were also there. So in that time, David said, Vindicate me, O Lord. Oh, judge me. Oh, be with me. Why are you so far from me? But God's restoration is there. God see how they were faithful to him. God God fulfilled his plan through his faithful people in the history of the uh, the, the Bible. Faithfulness to God is the key to see the glory of God. So for us also, faithfulness is the most important thing. In Jesus' life, faithful to God all the time. Okay? How about Jesus? Let's, uh, let's move on. How did he proclaim himself while, while he was in the, on this earth? 
And how did people respond to him? And what did God to do? How did God do to him? These are, I think, uh, we need to go through. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. That time, the prophet uh, and the shepherd and even the wise man proclaimed that, oh, this is the Messiah. But still, he has to proclaim that I am the Son of God. Okay, let's see. Before the resurrection, what did Jesus do? Number one, Jesus declared he was the Son of God by word, by word speaking. He said in uh, John, we see, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door. I'm the good shepherd. I'm the resurrection of life. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I'm the true vine for you all. I am the God. I am the Son of God. He proclaimed by his word. But some people believe it, and other people do not believe it. He proclaimed by word. And again, by his action. Jesus declared he was the Son of God by his action. He healed the sick, the lame, the blind. He casted the demon out. So by looking all this, it, and we can know that he is the son of God. And he also performed miracles, feeding uh, 4,000 people, 5,000 people, multiplying and changing water into wine. Many miracles were there. He was the son of God. But still, Many people do not believe it. So, let's see. Before the resurrection, how people view on Jesus. The disciple and listeners believe. This, uh, he has 12 disciples and many other listeners were there. So, disciple and listener, listeners believe because of what they saw and heard. In John chapter 2, verse 11, say, The disciple put their faith in him as Jesus performed his first miracle at Cana in Galilee. So, when they see, they believe, oh, this is the Son of Man, the Son of God. This is the Son of God. That's why he can do it. And number two, they expected Jesus to become the earthly king. But, oh, he, this is the son of God. But they expected him to rule over them like the earthly king. Like the Roman emperor. Like the king who has authority to, uh, to, uh, to rule over and to destroy other people. He will destroy the bad guy. And we will be uh, the leader. They expect. So Matthew chapter 20 Verse 20 to 22, we see, Then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to Jesus with uh, her sons, and kneeling down, asked a favor of him. What is it you want? Jesus asked, and he, as he said, Grant that one of these two sons of mine may sit at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. So they expected that Jesus will be the, the king there. So that time, Please put my son here and there so that they will also rule and they will also have power. Oh, sorry. Okay, the third one. They expect Jesus will promote his followers to become great leaders in the kingdom of heaven. Expectation is there. Oh, we are the follower of Christ, so we will be promoted. So they were asking, who will be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? This is what they are busy with, right? The, the disciples and the followers and the listener of uh, Jesus. And again here, these are the other group of people, Pharisees, Sadducees, and teachers of the law, religion leaders. So Jesus asked, number one, the false prophet. He was preaching like uh, the prophet. So they accused Jesus as the false prophet. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 20 to 22, we see, But a prophet who performed to speak in my name anything I have not commanded him to say, or a prophet who speak in the name of other God, must be put to death. So by using the law of Moses, they accused Jesus as the, uh, the false prophet. 
Number two, a stubborn and religious, a rebellious son. Deuteronomy chapter 21. Again, they are using the, the law of Moses. They accuse Jesus as a stubborn and religious son, a rebellious son. He did not listen to his mother and father, and he, he just do all these things like this, a stubborn son. And a deceiver who led people astray. What he was teaching was not, in, in their feeling, what he was teaching, Jesus was teaching was not like at the law of Moses. So uh, they accused him as the deceiver who led people astray, who led the Jewish people astray. If, uh, verse 2, if a man or woman living among you in one of the towns the Lord give you is found doing evil in the eyes of the Lord your God in violation of his covenant, and contrary to my command was worship other gods, bowing down to them or to the sun or, or the moon, the star or the sky. This, and this has been brought to your attention. Then you must investigate it thoroughly. That's why Jesus was accused as deceiver. And he was the one who led astray to other, uh, to other God. And the next one, how Pharisee and Sadducee sees. A threat to a nation because of his teaching. He was teaching about the kingdom of God. I am the son of, Jesus, uh, the son of God. He was proclaiming. And the other people, Pharisees, accused him a threat to a nation. In verse um, 47, in the, in the, the, light had red, uh, red, the red highlight, here is this man performing many miraculous signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him, and then the Roman will come and take away both our place and our nation. They were under a Roman Empire. And Jesus was proclaiming, I am the king, I am the son of God. And by his, uh, through his teaching and his performance, they, they are afraid of the Roman to come, to come and uh, destroy the nation, the people, the Jewish. But God's view on Jesus the other, the other things are the view of the disciples, the view of the Pharisees, but God view. For God, Jesus is the Son of God, who will save people from their sins. So Matthew chapter 3, verse 16 to 17, we see in the, the baptism of Jesus. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. This is uh, the word of God come from heaven. Matthew 17, 5 to 6, also in the transfiguration. We see, this is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. While he was on earth, God proclaimed that he is the son of God. He is my son, in whom I am well pleased. Despite people's accusation, God vindicated him in his resurrection. Accusation is there, but God approved his uh, identity. After facing all kinds of accusation, persecution, and even that, God raised him from the dead to let the world know he is the Son of God. People's view on him was not a matter. But how God saw was the most important matter for us also. How God sees us is the most important. How, God people see, how people see you is not the most important. Okay, what does the resurrection of Jesus teach? Or what, what does the resurrection of Jesus mean? Number one, it reveals who Jesus is. He is the Son of God. While he was on earth, he declared about his, uh, his uh, he is God, I am the Son of God. But in this resurrection, even though he did not, say, I am the Son of God, people will recognize, people will know that he is the real Son of God. Many people will reveal he is the Son of God. So the resurrection, the vindication of the king, this resurrection time reveal 
who Jesus is. He is the Son of God. You will not find him among the dead. He has reason. What, uh, in Luke chapter 24, as we have read, the women go there and look for the body of Jesus, but they did not find because he is Jesus. He is the Son of God. He is not human being anymore. You will not find him anymore. He is not among the dead. He has reason. He is Jesus, the Son of God. His prediction of the resurrection was fulfilled. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and life. In Luke chapter 24, as we have read, oh, did you remember? He has proclaimed, he has told you that he will be delivered to the people. They will uh, crucify him. They will, he, he will be buried. And the third day he will be raised. He will rise again. The prediction is fulfilled here. And people may think that by following or supporting him, he will become a king and at that time, they will benefit to rule others with him. But what they are thinking is not right. Now, Jesus is the son of God. How he will rule and how he will work is different from humans' per uh, perception, how they see. And it explained that what he has done during his lifetime among the people were under the will of God, the Father. He did everything, miracles, preaching, all the things that he, he has done were under the, son, uh, under the will of the God, the Father. The accusations of the Jews were wrong. He was not looking for his popularity, fame, or benefit, but to let the people know that he was the Son of God, who will save them from their sins. Jesus, what, they, what he did were not because of uh, longing for popularity, but people will still accuse that, oh, he want to be, become a popular one. He want to become something. He want to be the king or something like that. Accusation is there. So in our Christian life also like that. Many people will say, oh, he want to be a perfect one. He, he pretend like uh, a righteous person going to Sunday school or doing something. Accusation will be there. But the eyes of God, how God sees you is more important. It revealed that Jesus is the conqueror of that. The conqueror of that. Only Jesus rise from the dead. There are many millions of so-called gods, but only Jesus, the Son of God, conquered that and raised to live and rule. And it, it proved that Sadducees unbelief of resurrection. The Sadducees were the, the one who know well about the law and practice, but they did not believe in the resurrection. They did not believe in the existence of angels, but here, Jesus proved that there will be resurrection. And Jesus proved that he himself has risen from the dead, and he proved. And number five, this is the vindication of God. Jesus was accused. Jesus was, Jesus was rejected. But God approved and vindicated him. The condemnation and accusation were wrong. And his, he patiently completed the work of salvation. Jesus cramped came from heaven. God sent Jesus to the, the earth to save the people. And his mission, he was carrying on the mission of God. And now he patiently completed the work of salvation for the people which was assigned by God the Father. God assigned him and he completed. God's approval matters most. He stood for the truth until he died. Okay, so what are the impacts of the vindication of the King of Jesus? We have talked about the meaning of the, the vindication, but now here, what is the impact? Number one, the vindication of the King makes the way for salvation. Jesus preached the word of God while he was on earth. I am the Son of God. I am the, the way to heaven. He was preaching, but after the death 
after the resurrection, not only Jesus, even the disciples preached the word of God powerfully. The disciples who went back to their work after seeing Jesus died and he was uh, buried, they went back to their old uh, work, fishing. But after knowing after learning Jesus raised from the dead. Jesus is the real son of God. What did they do? They preached the gospel. They dared to die for uh, the gospel. They, died, they dared to die for God. And this is still the powerful message until today. This is the reason why we can live together, we love together, we, uh, we can stay together. As, uh, for example, our family, if Jesus was not risen from the dead, will not be here. And will not love by the, the church member. Will not, take care, will not be taken care by the church member. This is because of the love of God. This is because of the reason, the power of the blood. The power of the reason of Jesus Christ. The vindication directed people's concept on the Messiah, the, the Messiah. Well, Jesus was on earth. People expected that he will be the king one day. He will promote his disciples, his people, his followers. Jesus will one day kill all the bad guys. And he will be, but he will they, they did not believe that he will be killed to save all of us. Now, he did not kill all the bad guys. Even in his preaching, let everything grow together. And at the end, there will be judgment. Jesus did not kill all the bad guys, but he let them grow it. He himself died for all of us to save. Our life. And the vindication can give confidence to trust in him and boldness to stand for God's mission. He gave confidence to trust, boldness to stand for God's mission. Acts chapter 4, verse 18 to 20, we see Peter and John. Actually, Peter and John, after the death of Jesus, they went back to their, their old walk. But now, after the, the resurrection, after the vindication of Christ, what happened? Peter and John were forbidden by uh, the Sanhedrin. But what did they say? Judge for yourself whether it is right in God's sight to obey you rather than God. They stand for God. They boldly stand for God and they preach the word of God. Boldness from, com boldness come from uh, God and knowing about the reason Lord, the Son of God. And the vindication reversed everything, fear to hope and mourning to dancing. The disciples ran away because of fear of death, but after the resurrection, what happened? They chose to die for Jesus and for the gospel. They chose to die. They cannot be forbidden. And they were so sad, but now what happened? They overjoyed due, due to the resurrection. And the vindication changed people's expectation again here. They hope from Jesus something, but their expectations change. Not physical success or material blessing, but opportunity to extend the kingdom of God on this earth. Even the disciples expect the political and economic benefits from following Jesus. However, they gave even their life after the resurrection for uh, particularly for Paul, other things are rubbish compared to gaining Christ. In Philippine, he, uh, Philippians, he said, chapter 3, verse 1 to 10. So for the disciples also, what they see is only to preach the word of God, to change the, the mindset of the people, and to deliver the gospel to other people so that other people will also be saved from their sin. Uh, I remember one of uh, the Korean missionary to Myanmar, uh, named 
Hallelujah Kim came to our country, Myanmar, and preached the word of God. And he learned a uh, Burmese word, very short one. And he, he always uh, uh, speak about this every time he, he stands before others. That is in English. If you don't have house, no problem. If you don't have iPhone, no problem. If you don't have car, no problem. If you don't have Christ, there is a problem. So in Myanmar, in Masibu, Kiksa Masibu. Jisu Masibu, Kiksa Shire. That means if you do not have Christ, there is a problem. No, no house, no problem. No car, no problem. No iPhone, no problem. Other things, no problem. But if you don't have Jesus, there is a problem. So every time, even when he preached to the Bible school, when he preached to the, uh, the church, when he preached uh, on the street, he will talk about this. It is still in my heart, in my mind. It speaks to me. For me, I heard many times about this, but it speaks to me again. So for you and for, for all of us, if we do not have Christ, that is the problem for us. The resurrection lead people to commit themselves to the plan of God. Sometimes we have many plans. We want to do this. We want to do that. But after the resurrection, the people of God commit themselves to the plan of God. What God wants us to do. What they want to do is not important, more important than what God wants to do. Okay, so come to the... Uh, the conclusion part, let's see, what does vindication of Jesus mean to you today? Jesus has risen from the dead. He was not among the living, uh, the dead. He, he has risen from the dead. So for you, what does it mean to you? The God whom we worship today is the living God. The living God we are worshiping. That means God is with us all the time. Whatever we do, wherever we go, God is always with us. He is a living God. This is superior God than other God. And people may see that what you are uh, that you are nothing or you are wrong. However, what matters most is how God sees you. If you are right in God's eyes, everything will be right. Everything will be right. As we have a man in uh, Joseph. Joseph mentioned that. You intended to me. Your intention is to harm me. But this is the plan of God. God has a plan in our life. God sees everything in our life. What God sees us is more important. People may see you wrong. People may accuse you that you are nothing. But what God sees you is matter. Even Jesus, the Son of God, was not accepted by all people. Do not expect all people will love you. If we, are, we expect, oh, every people will love you, every people will like my preaching, every people will like what I am doing, if we expect like that, then we may not be happy. Jesus, the Son of God himself, was rejected. He was not accepted by all people. The view of the people are different. But Jesus, the Son of God, was vindicated at the end because he was faithful to God. He was stick to the plan of God to save the people, and he was vindicated. And even Jesus, the Son of God, must go through all kinds of hardship, even until that, do not expect everything will go well with you. However, God always has the answer, and he will never leave you nor forsake you. Sometimes we expect that we, are, we have God. God is with us. Everything will go well with us. But even the Son of God, Jesus Christ, suffered a lot 
the Son of God, go through all kinds of hardship. So as we are living on this earth, everything may not be well with us, but we have the living God, the living Son of God, Jesus, today. And the next one is, you belong to God, living a new life with Jesus. In Rome chapter 6, verse 3 to 4, we see that, don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? We now are baptized in his death, but not only until his death. What is there? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. So we are risen with Jesus Christ, not to do our manual things, not to do what we have done in the past, but to do the new thing, to live the new life with Jesus Christ. After the death, after the resurrection, what Jesus do? After the death and after the resurrection, what the, uh, the disciple has done, what the listener has done, were new. They expected something here, but after that, what happened? They chose to die for God. So now for us, you and me, we died with Christ we were buried with Christ. We were raised from the dead with Christ to live a new life with Christ. To do everything that God wants us to do. We have a new life with Jesus today. And you are alive not to sin but to live for God. In Romans chapter 6 verse 8 to 12 we see Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Christ. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, is never to die again, that no longer is master over you. For the dead that he died, he died to sin. Once for all, but the life that he lived, he lived to God. Even so, consider yourself to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. No, we are here not to sin, but to live for God. We are saved not to live our life as we like, but to live our life as the will of God, to live for God. So the blood, the price of the blood is very ex- uh, expensive and precious. So we are saved through the blood of Christ to live for him, to give our life and to give our time also. So, in our life, if we reflect on all this, Jesus died on the cross to save our life. And we were also died with him. And we are raised from the dead. We live for, for Christ now. But still, as we are on this earth, as we are human beings, we will be, uh, many people will see us in, their, uh, in different way. They will still accuse us. They will see us that we are wrong. But still, what we are looking for and what we have to fix on our eyes is Jesus Christ. Jesus died for us. He lived for us. He has risen from the dead today. And people's view may be different. I still remember when uh, our daughter was born in uh, seven years back. One of our church members, the women, she was uh, straightforward. And she will speak whatever she wants. And we love him very much. We, we love her very much. She came to our house to, to see our daughter. And she said, Oh, last week I went to one of my relatives uh, to see one of my relatives' daughter. And I, I told him, oh, your daughter is ugly. <laughs> and she said, I told her like that, but when I see your daughter, it's the same. <laughs> so we, with my wife, we laughed. <laughs> because she saw like this. But for us, 
What happened? We saw my, our daughter, beautiful, because our eyes is covered with love, right? Our eyes are covered with love, and we see our daughter beautiful. Likewise, now we are a sinner, but God, God the Father see us through Jesus Christ, and we, he loves us very much. Whatever we do, God loves us. Whatever we do, God approves us through Jesus Christ. We die. Our sin, we're dead with Christ, buried everything. And we are risen from the dead with Jesus Christ. That reason, the reason life of Jesus and the reason life of our life here is love very much by our God. He loves us. We live for God. This is the, uh, the message that I would like to bring to, today to you all. Thank you very much. God bless you all.